The first orbital flight of the rocket that Elon Musk promised several years ago is vital to helping build a city on Mars, and it could finally be as little as a week away from its debut launch. On Monday, propellant loading tests were conducted on Booster 7 with Ship 24 on the ground nearby. At 11.15 a.m., liquid methane propellant loading into B7 began with the B7 liquid methane tank showing frost. The massive depressurization venting from the Super Heavy Booster B7 liquid oxygen tank vented at 12.27 p.m., signaling that B7 cryotesting has been completed. Afterward, Mission Control filled both the B7 liquid methane tank and its liquid oxygen tank to test both B7 and ground service equipment, or GSE systems. As of 3 p.m., B7 was mostly detanked, and as of 4 p.m., B7 appears fully detanked. Once again, all thanks to Lab Padre for the amazing coverage. It looked like a successful wet dress rehearsal for Super Heavy Booster 7. Until this moment, we don't have any details of the test from SpaceX or Elon. But if all goes well, we could see the next pivotal step towards launch, which would be the lifting of the Starship itself on top of Super Heavy to give us the full stack vehicle. The chopstick arms are already getting ready for stacking. We also have news of road closures for today, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I don't think that moment would come so soon, but if it's actually happening, it'd be pretty cool. This could also be the final round of testing before the Federal Aviation Administration gives SpaceX the final green light to send Starship beyond Earth's atmosphere for the first time perhaps as soon as April 10th. Starship's first orbital flight has been the subject of an over 18-month review process led by the FAA, which said last June that it would allow the demonstration flight to move forward, but only once a list of 75 changes or mitigations and other conditions had been met. And if things go swimmingly for SpaceX, Raptor engines will make Starship the world's most powerful operational rocket. The title was previously held by SpaceX's Falcon rocket, though it was dethroned by NASA's Space Launch System Moon rocket. The SLS produced about 9.5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Falcon Heavy is essentially made of three Falcon 9 boosters strapped together and has 5 million pounds of thrust. In the end, the next mission is just a test, and there is the possibility that the rocket rapidly disassembles itself in an explosive fashion during launch, its ascent to space, or just about any other time during the flight, really. While Starship's earlier test flights within the atmosphere saw it return for an attempt at landing at Starbase, this orbital flight will see it shoot for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii after a short visit to space. SpaceX, Musk, and others have high hopes and big plans for Starship. In addition to those more distant dreams of making humanity multi-planetary, NASA is also planning to utilize Starship for its Artemis missions to the moon in the coming years. Even more near term, SpaceX is eager to begin utilizing the larger, more powerful rocket for its many upcoming satellite launches, including for its own Starlink broadband constellation. Next up on today's updates, we have NASA announcing the crew for the Artemis II mission. NASA announced on April 3rd the three Americans and one Canadian who will be on the crew of the Artemis II mission, the first humans to travel beyond low Earth orbit in more than half a century. During a ceremony at Ellington Airport near the Johnson Space Center, NASA announced that Artemis II will be commanded by Reed Wiseman with Victor Glover as a pilot. Christina Koch and Canadian astronaut Jeremy Hansen will be mission specialists. Wiseman, a former chief astronaut, flew to the International Space Station for a 165-day mission back in 2014. Glover flew on the Crew-1 commercial crew mission to the ISS in late 2020 for a six-month mission. Koch spent nearly a year in space on the ISS from March 2019 to February of 2020. Hansen, one of four active Canadian astronauts, will be making his first flight. The mission to the moon will launch four pioneers, but it will carry more than astronauts, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said at the event just before introducing the crew. Artemis II will carry the hopes of millions of people around the world. The four were selected by Joe Akaba, NASA's current chief astronaut, and Norm Knight, Director of Flight Operations at the JSC under the oversight of 
Vanessa Weish, director of the center. Officials did not elaborate at the event on the process by which they selected the four, beyond previous plans to have one Canadian among the four-person crew in exchange for Canadian contributions to the Lunar Gateway. Artemis 2 is currently scheduled to launch no earlier than November of 2024 on the second flight of the Space Launch System. It'll be the first time either the SLS or the Orion spacecraft have carried astronauts. The SLS will place the Orion spacecraft into an elliptical Earth orbit, remaining there for about a day to allow astronauts to test the spacecraft and confirm its life support systems and other key subsystems are performing well. The spacecraft will also perform a proximity operations or prox ops demonstration by maneuvering in the vicinity of the SLS's interim cryogenic propulsion stage. You get a full day to check out all your subsystems before you hit go to TLI or translunar injection, Ramsey said of the initial Earth orbit. If at any point you have issues, you have the opportunity to come back very quickly. Once the tests are complete, the Orion will fire its main engine to place the spacecraft on a free return trajectory around the moon. The spacecraft will swing around the moon without going into orbit around it, heading back to Earth to splash down in the Pacific. The full mission is scheduled to last about 10 days. The three driving principles for Artemis 2, he said, is crew safety and survival, vehicle survival, and mission success. The mission success principle, he said, features testing out the spacecraft subsystems, including in emergency and off-nominal conditions. There are additional flight test objectives the mission will attempt to carry out if time permits to help reduce risk for later missions. The acceptance of risk on Artemis 2 will be different from Artemis 1 because of the presence of the four-person crew. On Artemis 1, we pushed the edge of the performance envelope. We're not going to do that for Artemis 2, said Amit Kshatriya, head of NASA's new Moon to Mars program office, in an interview. Having Orion remain in orbit for a day to check out systems before heading to the moon is an example of that strategy, he said. We are not doing anything that needlessly puts more risk onto the crew. Jim Free, NASA Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, said NASA is still going through the lessons learned from the Artemis 1 mission, but felt confident enough in the outcome of that mission to name the Artemis 2 crew and have them start training. I think that's a great sign that we feel confident that we can trust human lives to this vehicle. The critical path for Artemis 2 is completing the Orion crew module, which will have crew displays and life support systems not needed for the uncrewed Artemis 1 flight. Free said there have been some supply chain issues with components of the life support system, but NASA and Orion Prime contractor Lockheed Martin have been working around those delays by changing the order of work on the module, trying to do as much as we can while we're waiting on parts. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.